The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or the UNFCCC, was first adopted in 1992 following the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. The ultimate objective of the UNFCCC is to stabilise greenhouse gas concentrations at a level that would prevent dangerous interference with the global climate system in the form of global warming beyond 2 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Today, there are 195 parties to the Convention who meet every year at a Conference of Parties, or COP, to negotiate the mitigation of climate change and the associated issues of adaptation and capacity building. BASIC is a block of four developing countries, Brazil, South Africa, India and China, that was officially formed in 2009 where the countries committed to act jointly at the Copenhagen Climate Summit, or COP15, where they played a significant role in the development of the Copenhagen Accord. Each of the basic countries is a regional power and together they account for over 15% of the world's gross domestic product or GDP and over 25% of global greenhouse gas emissions. The formation of the basic bloc reflects a change in the traditional division of the parties into the global north, the richer and developed countries, and the global south, the poorer and developing countries. Or Annex 1 and non-Annex 1 countries, as it was set out in the Kyoto Protocol. So what brought these four together? Each of the basic countries share a range of common features that shape their negotiating position within the UNFCCC. Firstly, they are all emerging, developing economies and major greenhouse gas emitters with relatively low per capita income and emissions. Secondly, economic growth and poverty reduction are domestic priorities. Thirdly, fossil fuels are important sources of domestic energy supplies. And lastly, they are all highly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. BASIC's negotiation position within the UNFCCC revolves largely around the principle of Common but Differentiated Responsibilities, or CBDR. First enshrined in the Rio Declaration, the principle encapsulates the notion that while all states must accept a common responsibility for climate change, they have differentiated responsibilities owing to the fact that they have made different contributions to the problem, and they have different economic and ecological capabilities. The basic countries view themselves as the victims of climate change and the negotiating position on several key issues revolves around the notion that developed countries need to shoulder a greater responsibility than developing countries. This was set forth in the joint strategy laid out before the Copenhagen Conference. BASIC have emphasised the Kyoto Protocol as the cornerstone of the climate regime, with a second commitment period in Durban seen as essential. They often refer to the Bali Roadmap, whereby developed countries that are not parties to Kyoto undertake reduction targets, whilst developing countries implement mitigation and capacity building measures. Primarily, it is their unanimous stance that developed countries should have more ambitious binding reduction targets than developing countries, because they have made much larger historical contributions to the current greenhouse gas concentration levels. Therefore, it is the developed countries that need to act first. The basic countries, on the other hand, have not yet had the same opportunity to take advantage of industrialisation as have the developed countries, and therefore they should not be subject to binding reduction targets. The basic negotiation strategy emphasises voluntary emission reduction targets for developing countries. Brazil and South Africa have committed to reduce outright emissions, Brazil by between 1 and 38.9% below what they would otherwise have been at by 2020, and South Africa have committed to a reduction of 34% below what otherwise would have been in 2020. China and India have committed to lower their greenhouse gas emissions per unit of GDP, China by 40 to 45 percent below 2005 levels and India by 20 to 25 percent below 2005 levels by 2020.
basic object to any attempt by developed countries to transfer their commitments and responsibilities to developing countries through the non-recognition of equity and CBDR. They believe that developed countries should be taking the lead when it comes to the mitigation of climate change. Further to this, a consistent pillar of BASIC's position is that in light of their current and historical responsibilities and greater capabilities, there should be a transfer of finance and technology away from developed countries back towards the developing countries. BASIC want the commitment from developed countries of US $30 billion in funding by 2020 to be upheld and they consistently negotiate for greater commitment and planning when it comes to the Green Climate Fund, the Adaptation Committee and the technology mechanisms suggested in Copenhagen. In this respect, BASIC adopt the position that adaptation and capacity building issues should be accorded equal priority to mitigation issues. The basic countries have interests at the international level, such as advancing climate change mitigation objectives, but their negotiating positions within the UNFCCC are constrained by various domestic interests and pressures. Robert Putnam refers to this as the two-level game. At the national or domestic level, domestic groups pursue their interests by pressuring the governments to adopt particular policies, and governments are driven to appease these groups in the hopes of re-election. On the other hand, there is pressure at the international level from other actors, including states and non-governmental organisations, to adopt policies that further climate change mitigation objectives. States cannot afford to ignore either of these levels and therefore negotiation positions can often be constrained by pressures from the other side. There are a variety of domestic pressures from within basic countries that help to explain their negotiating positions and principles. Firstly, China and South Africa are incredibly dependent on coal as a cheap but dirty source of energy. South Africa derives about 70% of total primary energy supply from coal and coal-fired power stations provide 93% of the country's electricity production. In China, coal accounts for 90% of the country's fossil fuel energy and 75% of commercial energy. This cheap source of energy fuels economic growth and human development priorities stemming from domestic demands for improved living standards and poverty eradication. This tension explains why China has pushed for their emission reduction targets to be intensity based, aiming for a reduction of emissions per unit of GDP as opposed to absolute emission reductions. China in particular is conscious of being denied the right to continue rapid economic growth as developed countries did in the 200 years post-industrialization. Brazil is less dependent on coal than the other basic members thanks to biofuels and hydropower. However, the majority of their admissions, around 61% in 2005, came from deforestation of the Amazon. Brazil must manage international pressures from negotiations surrounding plans for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation, otherwise known as RED, in a future climate agreement that first emerged in Cancun. However, reform to the forest code in Brazil after pressure from domestic agriculture groups is threatening Brazil's ability to adhere to future commitments under a potential RED provision in a climate agreement. The main domestic pressures for India stem from a push to achieve greater levels of social and economic development in a move towards the reduction of widespread poverty. The domestic fear is that tackling climate change will divert limited resources away from these goals and India must balance these considerations with broader international ambitions. Due to their current share of global emissions and the likelihood that these emissions will increase, the role of the basic countries will be crucial to the success of any proposed solution or climate agreement. BASIC have consistently reiterated the importance of multilateralism and the UNFCCC and they support the objective to keep global temperatures below the 2 degree increase on pre-industrial levels. However, it is crucial that BASIC use their new leadership amongst developing countries within the UNFCCC to pave the way for compromise and negotiation in the greater interests of obtaining an effective climate change agreement before it becomes too late.